M friends, tonight I want to show you something different. This unassuming box contains... Well, the best way to put it is a model from the future. So the company is called Resin Scales and the kit inside is an AMX50B. What makes it so different from anything I've built so far is the technology, because the model is completely 3D printed. This technology is becoming the new standard in our hobby and we can already find tons of aftermarket items that are made in this fashion, but as far as I can tell, this is the first company selling complete models in 135th scale. The greatest advantage is the low part count, while the amount of details is the same as with any high quality plastic kit. And it really shows, an entire lower hull made as a single piece with everything in place. The grab handles, cables, the entire engine deck, mesh screens, turret with every hatch, periscope and lifting hook, smoke dischargers, okay, <laughs> here I managed to break one, and the running gear. Just a few parts and it should look like any other nice kit. I especially appreciate the sharp detail on the inner side of the tracks. And the small parts are something I'd appreciate in plastic kits as well, such as the headlight covers that look better than plastic or photo edge parts. And the 50 cal with the hollow thermal sleeve is also a nice feat of modern engineering. There's also a one-piece gun barrel with a supplied carbon rod that ensures it won't bend down let's say, from heat or whatever, <laughs> and a pack with some metal stuff and magnets. So that's everything we're getting with this kit, there are no decals or instructions, but the assembly should be pretty straightforward. The first construction step, so to say, is removing the scaffolding. No, I'm not gonna use scissors, because check this out, I finally have a set of fancy sprue nippers. The process is pretty fast on these large parts, just as expected. They're sturdy enough and even if you handle some of the supports with brute force, it's not gonna cause too much damage, especially in places that are gonna be hidden. In fact, some of the supports got broken during the transportation. Resin is quite brittle, so that can be expected. Nonetheless, it made the job much easier. In less than 10 minutes, I had the entire turret. The hull was even faster, here I could just break them off, because none of this is gonna be visible in the end, and in less than 15 minutes I had most of the kit finished. Or did I? <laughs> well, here I wanted to see how long it would take to remove the entire running gear, but um, let's just say I quickly realized it wouldn't take 10 or 20 minutes, so... I got bored. <laughs> I ended up spending an entire evening removing those parts, and the biggest problem I see here is the layout. They're tightly packed together, which is completely understandable, but on the other hand, you often have problems getting to those supports, let alone removing them safely. No matter how delicate I was trying to be, I damaged the tracks in a few places. I don't know, maybe I wasn't using the forbidden jutsu of 3D printing, but it wasn't easy. Maybe I should have used a razor saw. Well, I can only speculate now. But hey, I've got everything removed. And again, regardless of the time spent on the running gear, I'm still very impressed. Such a low part count for a totally legit and highly detailed 135th scale kit. It's just amazing. So let's continue, shall we? The next obvious step is the cleanup. Luckily, the resin is very easy to sand, and here we can hit two flies with one stone. Get rid of the support remnants, and also knock down the subtle layering, which is always going to be present on 3D printed models. Resin produces a metric ton of dust, so it's important to protect your breathing... machinery. <laughs> Resin is also very brittle, like I've already mentioned, and it's very easy to damage. By accident or on purpose, which makes adding realistic damage to the rubber cladding on the wheels a walk in the park. The tracks were already damaged enough, so I had to focus on repairing them. At first I just wanted to hide those flaws with thick layers of mud, but what kind of modeler does that, right? I'm sure no modeler ever would hide their mistakes with weathering. Anyway, I built up the missing material with super glue, and once it was rock hard, I sliced off the excess, basically sculpting the missing track segments from glue. It's not gonna be as pretty as the rest, but 
at least there won't be any holes in the tracks, and I think it won't even matter once they're painted and weathered. The assembly went fine, but the swing arms for the outer wheels are slightly bent, resulting in levitating road wheels. The most elegant remedy I could think of is snapping them off. Okay, there might be a fancier way, using expensive side cutters. I didn't want to try bending them in hot water or anything, because 3D resin doesn't always react well with that, and you know, they won't bend back into the original position like a week later. I just made sure to completely cover them with super glue, so the entire structure will become tough as nails, and none of them would break off later. I think this was an issue with this particular kit, due to how the suspension is designed, and other models will probably be just fine. But hey, it worked and it looks way better now. I also filled some of the small holes with super glue, and a large drainage hole with a heated up plastic sprue. These holes are used to remove the excess resin from the inside of the print. The turret basket is designed with this raised lip, so it can rotate freely above the engine deck. However, this is not how the real thing looks like, and my solution was to glue a strip of thin copper around the entire basket. This way I could glue it perfectly flush with the hull, and once it's filled and sanded and textured, it will be barely noticeable. However, there should be a tiny gap around the turret ring, so I made a few rudimentary circles from plastic sheets and glued them underneath the turret. The printed grab handles are beautiful, no doubt about that, but the big ones can be very fragile. Knowing myself, I definitely snap them sooner or later, so I just decided to get rid of them and replace them with wires later down the road. Okay, the last brutal treatment is scribing. This model doesn't come with any weld details, except two on the turret, but that's not an issue, I think those would be too much even for high-tech printers. I was able to reference all of them from a few museum photos of the real tank that can be quickly googled, and also a few HD renders from World of Tanks which are extremely detailed and accurate. Resin behaves very differently compared to plastic, but it's quite easy to scribe. What I didn't quite appreciate are some of these panel lines that are modeled as raised details, or how aircraft modelers refer to them, positive panels. Other panels on this model are printed normally as negative details, so I'm guessing it's not a limitation of the technology, just a creative decision. I mean, it's okay, but the model is gonna look a bit more authentic when they're re-scribed. I've built a few resin kits in the past, and I'd say the main difference between them and plastic kits is the type of work. You can spend the same amount of time on both, but with plastic, you're assembling the kit from hundreds of pieces, while with resin, you're mostly cleaning up and refining a few parts. Well, let's now get to the fun part. My definition of fun is texturing. Roughening the surface with a rotary tool causes even more dust than before, so again, a gas mask is essential. There is a slight hint of cast steel texture, and some of their other kits are even better in this department, but I wanted to make it even more visible. Not gonna lie, I made it much heavier than it is on the real tank, but it was all purposeful. One of the things I wanted to try is using acrylic wood putty for the heavy texture. I noticed how good it works on diorama stuff such as styrofoam concrete and so on, and yeah, it works just as well on models. I applied it very sparingly though, because it has a lot of volume, but then again, it's easily knocked down with some gentle sanding. The second layer, as usual, is Tamiya putty diluted with Mr. Cement S. It behaves differently on the resin, because the putty or the cement won't attack the surface as it does on plastic kits, but it sticks to the surface without any fuss. This was then knocked down with a fine sanding sponge, which removes the ugly bits, and levels out the raised texture, making it more subtle and authentic. And more refining was done by stippling even more putty, but this time it was more diluted. Because the model doesn't react with modeling cement, it's easy to wipe off any unwanted putty from smaller details, you know, keeping the build nice and clean. The rolled steel plates have a much smoother texture, so two or three layers of very diluted putty are gonna be enough here. 
And now it's time for the obligatory welding. This is the standard method I use on all my models. So Tommy epoxy body quick type rolled into thin worms. In fact, I summed up and explained all these texturing techniques in one of my older videos. So if you're not familiar with them, it's worth checking out. If you already know them, I just want to add that this tank has some insane welding. The whole turret has a pretty complex shape and basically the front part is a huge steel casting while the remainder is welded from steel plates. But yeah, some of these shapes are pretty wild. However, it definitely adds a lot of visual detail and it's gonna be a treat to post shade and pin wash this model. The casts also have visible seam lines made by the sand mold. These can be easily replicated in the same way, just without texturing. So here it is with the heavy metal treatment completed. Another interesting detail is that this tank has corner welds, so we don't see the armor plate cross sections, something that's fairly common on most of these, you know, older tanks. Now I had to fabricate the handles from copper wire. I was looking forward to this step because Rob, one of my patrons, decided to make his own crab handle bending tool. I provided him with some feedback and he ended up making this tool with half millimeter increments. So unlike the previous tool I had, where it was pretty much impossible to hit the correct dimensions, I was able to make all three and make them fit perfectly into the pre-drilled holes. The smoke launchers also had small handles, but I bent these over a pair of tweezers because they were just too small. I also got curious about the barrel. Usually I hit them with the obligatory red primer to spot any imperfections or seam lines on plastic barrels. And in this case, it was to see how's the print quality. Well, I don't know about the rest of the kit, but this, this looks pretty much perfect. Okay, going back to adding what I had to remove. I made lots of plastic bolt heads using the RP tools punch and die set. I had to remove the original ones while I was re-scribing the panel lines. And the perfectionist in me wanted to replace all of them, so, you know, so they look all the same. But I also want to see how the 3D technology looks once it's painted. So the finished model will have a mishmash of digital and analog <laughs> bolt heads. As usual, I used my favorite combo of VMS Black Super Glue and their debonder or super glue remover. Being able to efficiently remove any unwanted glue is a total game changer because it turns a rather messy job into a perfectly clean finish. The remaining parts from the kit are simply beautiful. This is the type of stuff I'd love to see in the more mainstream models. Okay, working toe shackles are really fancy and not always needed, but one piece in scale headlight covers would be pretty sweet, don't you think? Especially in all those Sherman kits, for example, because plastic ones are very thick and photo etched are not that easy to assemble. So this would be a sweet spot for everyone. Realistic for more demanding modelers while keeping the assembly easy for regular hobbyists. The only real 3D printed blunder was this trapdoor on the turret where spent shells were ejected by the auto 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 loader mechanism. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's how the model pretty much comes out of the box, with a few improvements here and there. And I gotta say it's an impressive tank and it's truly humongous, <laughs> but since it's pretty much a what-if model, because French only made five prototypes of this tank, I wanted to make it more customized. Well, this is more of an additional detail, but basically the single piece printed machine gun wasn't easy to clean, and I managed to scrape off some of the details from the ammo canister. Well, adding a photo etched lid solved both issues. The damage is hidden and the model is more detailed. Luckily, I never throw away any unused photo edge, because, you know, it doesn't take up too much space and it's a valuable source of various details for all kinds of models. This also applies to plastic parts, especially when you're left with some unused, let's say, engineering tools, exhausts, tracks, wheels, you know, whatever. You just never know when they're gonna come in handy. 
It's hard to tell where I got some of these, but I know the tow cable comes from the Mink Yak Panther I built before this, and the axe and crowbar are from a Ryefield model Tiger, and yeah, spare parts are just awesome. <laughs> I didn't have any unused antenna mounts, so I quickly modeled and printed my own. They're not very accurate, but I'd say it's better than nothing. <laughs> and to finish it off, a resin figure from Panzer Art to give the model a human element, but also to show how massive the tank was. It's an absolute unit. Anyway, my friends, one more thing about the figure. From my very limited research and the few photos I was able to find, it seems to me that post-war French uniforms were almost identical to American ones. Maybe the color was slightly different, but I can't tell from black and white pictures. But that's the reason I used an American tanker figure. As for the model itself, it's seriously the most impressive resin kit I've ever built. I was never best friends with resin, but I've done a few of them in the past. Most of the time my experience was pretty painful, except for one amazing kit from a Czech company plus model. But this puts the term resin kit to a whole new level. I'm a huge fanboy of 3D printing. I just love the idea of converting something digital into a real life object and this kit, along with every other model from Resin Scales, shows perfectly how far the technology has progressed. My only constructive input would be the tracks. I think they'd be much easier to assemble if they were made as individual moving links. I know it might seem counterintuitive, but these static tracks required a lot of work, and the fit is very tight. Assembling individual working tracks would take probably the same amount of time, if not even less, and the result would be far better and more satisfying. Considering these models are not the cheapest, I mean, this one cost me 130 euros, I think it would make the experience much better. But other than that, I'm very impressed. Resin is just different than plastic, so the building experience and the required assembly techniques are also gonna be different. I think 3D printed models are gonna become an established part of our hobby in the near future. So I hope you enjoyed this video where we took a glance at how it might look like in a few years. <laughs> and also a huge thank you goes to my patrons. My Patreon feed is like a magazine subscription where you can get very frequent, almost daily updates from all my projects. I've shared even more thoughts about this model there and there's also more information about everything I work on. We can also get in touch through DMs and comments, you can watch one week early ad-free videos, and I also have these beautiful studio photos which you can download in full resolution. Something else that you can download and might find interesting are real life references and inspirations for dioramas, and small 3D models made by yours truly, which you can print yourself if you have a 3D printer. Anyway, that's gonna be it for tonight, my friends. I'm gonna go post-shade and pre-weather the life out of this kit so we can see how it looks painted. And until then, stay safe, stay awesome, keep building those models, don't just collect them, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!